it would seem obvious to me that you yourself must come from a pretty intensive physical background or you wouldn't even really have hooked up with those guys, would you? Yeah, so what the way that so way it all happened, I mean I come from a really um, um, grew up uh, I was homeschooled uh, mm -hmm. cool. all the way through. Uh, never I, I stepped into school for about three weeks and uh, after three weeks uh, I didn't didn't work out so <laughs> yeah went to second grade and um, my my dad worked construction he had his own company we didn't make a lot of money but we got by I had, uh, four younger siblings wow. um, I, I definitely uh, I definitely felt responsible for the other kids I was I was pretty straight edge and um, and I ended up I I remember being in in the high school years asking bigger questions. I remember I grew up in a very Christian environment in Memphis, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and uh, there was no other religions. Yeah, uh, nothing was discussed. Mm -hmm. um, if anything wasn't what I was being told from the Bible, then it was. Have you recovered? Visible. I, I have recovered. Okay. Ayahuasca helped put the yeah help me on that one. Um, yeah, a trip to to visit Mother Mary. <laughs> yeah, Mother Mary. <laughs> The real mother. The, yeah. The, um, yeah, it was, uh, I had already, I, well, I'll tell you how that went too, but I remember in high school journaling about uh, fasting and for a long period of time of letting the, the body, like taking all sensation away from the body, uh, stimulus, mm -hmm. and to meet spirit. And in and, and different words, because I had no, I, I was writing on meditation, I was writing on these things. I didn't even know uh, what it was. And I remember showing my friends when I was 15 years old, I was like, hey, check this out. And then making fun of me. Yeah. And going, wow, that's really fucking silly. <laughs> and uh, I got really embarrassed. And so it was funny is when I was 15 years old, I got really curious about these things. And, but I had no one to connect with. I had nothing to read, none of that. And then I got embarrassed about it. And around that time, I decided... Um, well, I'm going to forget all that. It's not practical. I'm going to start being in the real world. Mm. And, um, when I was 15, I decided I was going to go in the Navy. Really? And I was, I was I'm going to be a Navy SEAL. And so I... You're way too calm and happy to have done that. Yeah. Well, I also recovered from that. Yeah. <laughs> but I, 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 I did. I, I trained for the Navy. Um, I, I went in, I went to Bud's. And oh, you did? Yeah, I didn't. Wow. Make, I didn't make it through the program though. Yeah. So, what's designed so that most people won't? Yeah, I physically just. I was 19 years old. There was it, the demands were too high. I hurt my hip during Hell Week, yeah. and they said, "Well, you're physically incapable, so we're gonna roll you back to repeat the training again." Oh, because wow. Hell Week's about five weeks in a phase one, and I'm looking at it and I go, "There's no way." It's just. I, I completely broke in that moment oh. and I said, I'm, I'm done. So I quit mm -hmm. and that was the most devastating moment. But I'd spent from the ages of, of 15 to 19, my entire life was prepared for that. I was running, I was swimming, I was reading, I was picking up all these magazines. I was, I was buying all these books and I was studying nutrition and training. And I, I mean, I, I, I prepared as best as I could. And then, I didn't make the program and I go to the fleet and I spend about three years uh, do it, being on a ship uh, out on the East Coast doing a couple deployments and the whole time planning to go back to Bud's. A lot what of was your MOS or military? Or IT, so same as an RM, um, radio oh, okay. and uh, like computer networks and things okay. like that. Um, so I, I was playing, I was. So as soon as I left, I started training to go back. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys, there's a lot of guys that it takes them a couple times to get through that program. Yeah, you know, it's, um, you know <laughs> you're not exactly trying out for like a local basketball team or something. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what attracted me to it. You know, looking back on it, you know, why did I really want to do it? You know, there was, you know, I wanted people to like me. I wanted people to think I was great. I, I grew up feeling in high school feeling like I was not as good as everybody else. I wasn't going to be as smart or whatever. And I wanted, there was a part of me that wanted to prove 
that I was, that I could be elite. I could be on the, the top teams. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, there was nothing more elite than that. And so I started preparing again for that. But the way the cards shook out is me getting orders to go back to Bud's just, it just didn't work out. Yeah. And uh, so it was time for me to leave. They're like, okay, it's, I'm either going to get out of the Navy or I'm going to re-enlist. And I had no idea what I was going to do when I got out. I said, I'm out. Mm -hmm. um, I had advanced in rank really fast. I made E6 in four years, which is mm, that's great. Which is unheard of, really. And people, people in the military were pissed at me mm. for leaving because they wished. They were like, if I were you, I would, I would jump on this. I'm like, I'm, I'm getting out. And I go to school. And I get out and I start going to school and I, I had no idea what I want to do. And I, I was very aimless. And I was making poor life decisions during this time as well. And um, lots of drinking, lots of hanging out with the wrong crowd. Um, yeah, some, some interesting moments in there. And I start going to school and I go, well, I'm going to go to school in my hometown in Memphis, Tennessee. My parents live there. I'm going to reconnect with my siblings. I haven't seen them in you know, four years. Mm -hmm. And I was miserable, and I, I was like, "Well, I don't know what I want to study. I'll do business because business, look, you know, everybody could use more information about business. Everyone's got to do some level of business in this world, you know, in this capitalist society." So uh, I go to business school, and accounting kicked my ass. Oh yeah, I fucking hated it. Yeah. I fucking hated it. And it's I started, a certain kind of mind for that. Yeah, it's a different kind of. And I had no context. I'm like, "Why are the debits and credits? What are we doing here?" Yeah. And I'm looking through the school and I, I go, oh, there's an exercise science department. Oh, neat. There's a kinesiology department. I go, I go, exercise. I'm like, that's my whole, the last nine years of my life, I've been obsessed with training. I've yeah. learned everything. Everyone I meet, I know more than they do about training. Yeah. Like I, be, I became everybody's trainer out of all my friends. I did a little bit of personal training here and there. And um, I was studying NSCA textbooks when I was in the Navy. And I go, oh. And I sign up and I go, oh, I'm gonna take weightlifting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch majors. I'm gonna, I'm gonna major. I, I don't know what I want to do, but this looks interesting. And I'm gonna take weightlifting 101. And I go, oh, I'm gonna do weightlifting 101. I know how to weightlift. I'll fucking ace that. And I show up and we're talking about snatch and clean and jerk. And I go, I have no idea what this is. All my weight training up to that point had been more, you know, of a bodybuilder type of scenario, which was really good for me. Uh, during that time, it actually, I think that background helped my body last as long as it did. Yeah. Uh, doing uh, weightlifting and CrossFit. But I got, I fell in love with weightlifting, started competing in that, stopped running so much. And I got introduced to, I had no idea there was even a field like that. Mm -hmm. like I, I assumed there was people studying it. I mean, they were producing the, the text I was reading and stuff, but I never thought about me studying it. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with it. Ended up in the labs, helping out where I could uh, with research. And during that period of time, I got, I got the itch to, I go, wow, I'm going to open a weightlifting gym. There's all the gyms in town suck. I'm going to open up my own thing. I, uh, and then CrossFit came along mm -hmm. and I knew that having a weightlifting gym was going to be miserable as far as getting members. Uh -huh. And I go, I, I got introduced to CrossFit. The first time I saw it, I go, that's the dumbest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 and, and, uh, and six months later, I, I was taking a break from weightlifting. And I go, I'm going to try that CrossFit thing out. And I give it a shot. And I go, this is fun. This yeah. is really, really people are going to want to do this. You know, I'm going to find the CrossFit gym here in town. And I'm going to I'm gonna go coach there. I can coach the weightlifting there. Because I'm seeing what people are posting. And they suck at weightlifting. Yeah. And there was none. So I go, oh, I guess I'll open a gym. So yeah. this, was, this was one of those things where I go, I don't, I couldn't stop myself. There wasn't like this burning desire, like I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to own my own business, or even I want to train people. Like, it, like I didn't, I had this desire to introduce people to new stuff, but I'm not the type of person that wants to work with someone one-on-one -on -one and teach them how to squat better and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I go, this should just exist. Mm -hmm. And if no one else is doing it, fuck it, I'll do it. So I opened up a gym with $17,000. It was shitty. Well, and start. It was a start. And then, um, you know, I ran that from 2007 to 2012. And I was, I tried out different entrepreneurial ventures in there. I, I started an equipment business at one point, closed up shop once I broke even three months in. I was like, I don't want to sell equipment. That's a lot of work. 
a lot of work, too much work for what I wanted. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, around 2011, started looking into the podcast thing, and mm-hmm. I saw I saw Rob Wolf doing his podcast, mm-hmm. and it was pretty dry. And I've I never, never heard of it. I know. I just know of Rob. You know Rob? Yeah. And he was very, you know, science heavy. I go, oh, I wouldn't want to do like. I never thought about it doing one myself in Tiger Joe Rogan. Right. And I go, oh, you can make it whatever you want it to be. Yeah. Oh, in that case, I should do one on strength and conditioning. Mm. And at that point, one of my favorite uh, uh, authors was Ayn Rand, and uh, she had written Atlas Shrug. So oh. we were sitting around trying to name the show, and we called it Barbell Shrug. And there was, uh, I was really fortunate. I tried, uh, I tried out with a lot of different people. And it ended up being uh, two co-hosts, uh, Chris Moore and Doug Larson, and both of them had master's degrees in kinesiology, and were they both been attending NSCA conferences since they were, you know, you know, so Doug from high school, and so they were like deep in the science, deep into the training, and so I had really knowledgeable guys and curious guys on the show with me, and there was. We had a really good dynamic. Is I was the host, and Doug was Mr. Technical, more more hard answers, and yet Chris Moore, um, who's passed now, um, Chris Moore was uh, so Doug was a fighter. Chris Moore was a power lifter, and I was a weightlifter, mm. crossfitter in the middle. And Chris Moore was more of the the wild one, like the, he was going to throw the crazy questions out there. And uh, you never got to meet him, but you know maybe on the other side. And yeah, well, that's all right. He. Um, so we, the show did really well. We had a camera, we had, uh, we had a guy that made sure the video work was top notch. And one of the things I decided, and this is what I've learned about doing anything in business is do, the, do it the best. Mm-hmm. And that's how you can stand out. And we had the best audio, the best video. And I was like, we really, really went after it. And it paid off, yeah. it really paid off because we became one of the most popular podcasts around and, and fitness and nutrition on iTunes. We were ranked number one for years. Wow. Um, we always did them in person. So a, an unintentional benefit, I, I just wanted good audio and video. The mm-hmm. unintentional um, positive consequences of that was that I became very networked yes. because now I'm hanging out with people one-on-one, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I grab lunch with them afterwards and What's happening on the interview is a snippet yeah. of the benefit I got from that. So now I get to be friends with everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm really well networked, and then I get to learn all this, you know, the real information. And uh, you know, what what's what are they not saying on the show? And then what what's really curious for me because when I'm running a show, I gotta go. All right, what does the listeners need to hear? What are they curious about? And then what am I curious about? These are different things. Yeah, especially as more time goes on, because I already know a lot of stuff. So my super curious questions, you know, might lose some people. Yeah. Um, so there's, it, it, I, I love podcasting. I love interviewing for that way is trying to hold two perspectives simultaneously while getting good information. So Barbell Shrugged, man, that ran for, it's still running. It's mm-hmm. got a new host um, as of a little over a year ago. So um, you're not doing that anymore? I, no, no, I uh, I walked away from that. You were one of my last uh, uh, interviews. Right on, man. And Glad I, I got to yeah. be it with the original team there. Yeah, and uh, I left it uh, a little over a year ago, and um, we expanded that to a network, and then uh, just about three months ago, um, I, I really wasn't being super involved with the company. I took some time off last year and started some new projects, and the just I allowed my curiosity to carry me. And I realized that I no longer wanted to run that company. I never, I didn't want to be involved anymore. So I stepped away, I resigned. Um, I, what was your heart pulling you toward? Um, my heart was pulling me toward doing work more on um, less fitness, mm-hmm. necessary, less physical fitness, more psycho-emotional work. And so working more with, uh, a lot of people would call it personal development. And I want to really bring uh, a lot of the more psycho-emotional um, health and fitness conversation to the fitness community. And so uh, my partners and Shrug just were not really that interested in that. They really wanted to focus on physical fitness. Mm-hmm. And I could tell over time there was this 
your interest for evolving out of that sort of focus. Yeah, and so it was like, they wanna keep doing this. I could either try to buy them out and move all this, but the brand was already super focused on fitness, on physical fitness. I'm like, that's cool. Why don't you guys just keep doing what you're doing and I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on and do something else. And I had already had, I, I had another, I have another business on the side where I coach trainers and, and personal trainers on how to build a coaching business. Right. We're on the entrepreneurial side. And so um, I had that going on, but I also partnered up with some, uh, two, two guys from a company called Procabulary. And so their whole focus is on uh, changing, basically perspective and how you think through changing your language. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of their work. And we decided to put together a language course back in the fall. And so that whole thing turned into, you know, we're gonna launch a whole company. Mm. So we're gonna go well beyond just a course. We're gonna launch a coaching company that's going to uh, focus on fitness. Nobody's, from what I've seen, nobody's focused on the fitness community with, uh, with this approach. Mm -hmm. and what we're, what we're now introducing it as is cognitive fitness. Mm -hmm. You know, your, yeah, your physical fitness may be, you know, you may be doing pretty good there, but what about your cognitive fitness? What about um, what's happening upstairs, which is driving this whole machine? Mm -hmm. um, what about it may be out of alignment that is causing you to get injured or to have a, a poor relationship with your body, poor relationship with your food, all these types of things and so